Okay, class. Today we're going to be talking about the Silk Roads. So as you saw yesterday, our new unit, Unit 7, is going to be about interactions across the Eastern Hemisphere. Right, so thinking about how did these groups of people come into contact with each other, you know, through mostly trading. Okay, and what were the advantages of that and the disadvantages of that, or the cost and the benefits, like you talked about yesterday. This is a two day document, so you have today, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday to complete it. There are four parts to the document. I'm just going to go through all of them briefly with you, and then if you want to stick around for the whole read through, you can do that. So part one is going to be an ed puzzle. You're going to watch this video. You're going to answer the questions on this document. You know, make sure you do them here. Part two, you have a reading. So you're going to go through, answer the questions as you go. You'll see that all of the questions are factual, which means you can find them in the text. Part three is a chart where you're really just using the questions you answered uh, to put in here, okay, in this chart. And then you're also doing a cost benefit analysis. So what were the cost of trading and the benefits of trading? And again, you can refer back to those questions. We've given you the numbers to refer to. Part four, your final part is a final question. So thinking about do the benefits of trade outweigh the cost? Why or why not? So you're thinking about, you know, if the benefits do outweigh the cost, you're saying it is worth it to trade. There are more positives. If they do not outweigh the cost, you're saying it is not worth it to trade. There are more negatives. And we give you some sentence starters for that because you need a claim and one piece of evidence. So again, this is a two day document. So, you know, however you want to split it up, that's kind of up to you. One of my suggestions, you know, would maybe be to do your ed puzzle today and then maybe do your reading and charts tomorrow with your final question. Maybe you want to do half your reading today, half tomorrow. That's kind of up to you. So I'm going to start now and actually go through, you know, the whole document as a read aloud. So again, part one, Silk Road's Ed Puzzle. Watch the below Ed Puzzle and answer the given questions. Make sure all answers are answered below in the chart. Okay, so you know, you're writing all of your answers here. For the multiple choice, just highlight however many it tells you to highlight. So why don't you open up your Ed Puzzle, right, in your other <clears throat> tab. Give it a sec. And again, it will stop, you know, the questions on here, but you also want to make sure you're doing them on here. So why don't you pause this video, go ahead and watch your Ed Puzzle, and when you're ready, you know, restart my video. Okay, so at this point, your Ed Puzzle should be done, you know, and you should have all of your answers on this document. So now we're going to go through, the, you know, the real read aloud part, which is part two. You're reading questions, read the text, and complete the questions as you go in complete sentences. So trade, goods, and ideas travel the Silk Roads. Trade was important from the very beginning. As early as 2300 BCE, civilizations in Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Indus Valley bought and sold with one another. The development of the Silk Roads allowed these early exchanges to expand dramatically, leading to even more significant changes in human history. Learning began to spread to new places. Making connections. Agrarian farming civilizations did not exist entirely on their own. As they grew and stretched their boundaries, they joined up with other civilizations and together they formed larger civilizations, right? So they're starting to grow and expand as they come into contact with each other. The linking up of different civilizations was an important process. It guaranteed that shared learning reached further than ever before. In Africa, Asia, and Europe, all civilizations were linked together into a large interconnected trade network called the Silk Roads. However, this network was not just about the trade of goods. Travelers on the road were also spreading social, religious, and philosophical ideas. They learned each other's languages and exchanged technology. Unfortunately, diseases were also spread. The Silk Roads were the most important exchange system that existed in the world. So besides goods, list three other positive things that were spread along the Silk Roads. And you can just list them. They don't need to be full sentences. I'm going to change that in directions. Um, you know, so three other positive things. So disease, you know, should not be an answer here, right? Because that would be a negative. 
but you want to think about three of the positives from this paragraph. So why don't you go ahead, pause this video, and answer number one. Okay, let's keep going now. We have a little image, an outpost, so kind of a trading outpost where they would stop, you know, for supplies. The first Silk Roads era, 50 BCE to 250 CE, so about 300 years. The first major period of Silk Roads trade occurred between about 50 BCE and 250 CE. These first exchanges took place between the Chinese, Indian, Kushan, Iranian, steppe nomadic, and Mediterranean cultures. So spreading from Asia, you know, through Asia and over all the way to Europe with the Mediterranean. The Han Dynasty in China really started the Silk Roads trade. The Han decided in the first century BCE to interact with their European neighbors. Up to this point, trade had been small and conducted regionally. Now it became a great exchange network stretching across Africa, Asia, and Europe, right? So all three of those continents. This occurred around the same time that Augustus Caesar came to power in Rome. His rise to become emperor ended a century of civil war in the Roman Empire. A relatively peaceful era ensued, the Pax Romana, right, which we learned about. Trade increased and the demand for foreign luxury goods in Rome exploded. The desire for rich goods like silk led to a huge expansion of trade. Land-based trade routes connected the Mediterranean with East Asia. Shipping routes connected Roman Egypt to India by water. Right, so remember Rome, they had part of Africa in their empire. So list the three continents that the Silk Roads helped to connect through trade. So the continents, I do not want countries here, the continents. So look back in this paragraph and find the three continents. They're the three continents that we're always talking about, right, in the Eastern Hemisphere. So why don't you pause my video and answer number two. Okay, so whether by land or by sea, However, few traders ever traveled the entire length of the Silk Roads, right? So you didn't go all the way from Europe, you know, to China in Asia by yourself, because that's thousands of miles. So typically, merchants from both ends of the road took their goods as far as Central Asia. At that point, they would pass them to a series of middlemen who would continue the goods along the trade routes, right? So it's kind of like, you know, you would go a certain length, you'd give it to somebody else, they would go, they would go, they would go, right? And it would keep passing from trader to trader. During the 3rd century CE, the Silk Roads fell out of use. Both the Chinese and Roman empires withdrew from the network, so they stopped trading. Silk Roads trade was at least partly responsible for this. Trade routes helped spread disastrous diseases. Smallpox, measles, and bubonic plagues devastated the populations at either end of the routes. Europeans had little resistance to diseases brought from Asia and vice versa. As a result, the population of the Roman Empire fell from perhaps 60 million to 40 million by 400 CE. China's population may have dropped from 60 million to 45 million by 600 CE. Diseases had an extremely negative impact on the civilizations along the trade routes and led to a decline throughout much of Europe and Asia. So number three, again, factual, list three types of diseases that spread along the Silk Road. So looking for that list that's up in this paragraph. So why don't you pause, answer number three. Okay. But then came the establishment of the Islamic empires, so the caliphates. I'm actually going to say caliphates. So yours will say caliphates, the Islamic caliphates in the 8th and 9th centuries. At the same time, the Tang Dynasty in China emerged. A revival of Silk Road's exchanges along both land and sea routes began. Right, so they kind of restarted using these trade routes again. And again, here's a map just kind of showing you the extent, right? So a lot in Asia over here. But again, connecting to Africa, we see the little uh, eastern tip of Africa. And then up into Europe, right? We see Italy and Rome, Byzantine Empire. Okay, the second Silk Roads era from 700 to 1200 CE, so about 500 years. 
A second significant Silk Roads era ran from about 700 to 1200 CE. It connected China, India, Southeast Asia, the Islamic Caliphates, and the Mediterranean. The second era saw a vast trading web based on busy land and sea trade. Right, so again, they're going over land and they're going over sea, right? You can see a couple places where it crosses the ocean, not the ocean, the sea. The primary function of the Silk Roads during both periods was to enable trade, but intellectual, social, and artistic ideas were also exchanged. Historians believe that the exchange of ideas had the greatest significance for world history. So number four, factual, lists three types of ideas that were exchanged along the Silk Roads. Okay, so three types of ideas that were exchanged. And again, factual, so looking back in this paragraph. So pause to answer that. Okay, the goods exchanged across Africa, Asia, and Europe during the second Silk Roads era were impressive. Ceramics, textiles, which would be like a fabric, food, spices, and art were traded along the route. But just as with the first era, religious exchanges were perhaps of even greater significance to world history. Many foreign religions, such as Christianity and Islam, made their way into East Asia. Mosques, you know, some Muslim, even began to appear in many Chinese cities. But out of all the foreign belief systems that reached China, Buddhism made the most substantial advancements. They got a lot of followers. So number five, again, factual, lists at least three goods. So not the religions, but the goods, the actual items that were traded along the Silk Road. So again, you might need to look back. You know, to this part about the goods in the beginning, right? So three types of goods, items, like physical things that were traded. So pause to answer that. Okay. However, should we come there? the Silk Roads could also be very dangerous. Long stretches in between trading cities would have bandits who would steal goods from merchants and traders. These long stretches could also lead to starvation or dehydration due to lack of food and water for the traders as they travel. Traders had to make sure to pack enough in order to get through to the next city, right? Enough supplies in order to get through the next city. Number six, factual, list two dangers of trading along the Silk Road. So looking in this paragraph, you know, what would be dangerous about it? What could go wrong? So pause to answer that. Okay, so our last section of the reading here, exchange shapes culture. The Silk Roads are the su supreme example of the interconnectedness of civilizations. Through some of the harshest geography on earth, merchants and adventurers carried goods and ideas. Diplomats and missionaries, a person sent on a religious mission, brought their political ideas and religious beliefs to new places. Each type of exchange was important. Because of this ancient interaction, to this day, this area of the world shares common technologies, artistic styles, cultures, and religions. This spread and mixing of cultural beliefs, ideas, religions, goods, and social activities from one group to another is called cultural diffusion. Even diseases and immunity to diseases are shared. Because of the Silk Roads, Africa, Asia, and Europe had a larger population that was much more linked through trade and exchange than the other areas of the world. The roads also helped new technologies develop faster. Okay, so that's the end of our reading. So now we're gonna go on to these charts. So part three direction, Silk Road charts. Fill in the two below charts based on the reading and questions above. You need at least three examples in each box. So first, you need the three continents involved in the Silk Roads trade. And again, go up to question number two. So you should have this answer. So if you scroll up to number two, you should be able to just copy and paste these three continents that you should have and bring them down to your chart. Goods exchanged, number five. So again, you should have three goods right here. Copy and paste them down to your chart. Culture and ideas exchanged, you have number one and number four for this. So if you look at number four, you should have three types of ideas. And number one, you should also have three positive things that would be part of the culture that was spread. So you can kind of pick and choose which ones you wanna copy there. But again, making sure you have three in each box, which you should. So, you know, pause to kind of get that done and then we'll go over the cost benefit. 
Okay, so the cost benefit analysis, this is what you talked about yesterday, right? This is weighing the good and the bad against each other and seeing which one you think kind of wins, right? Is there more good or is there more bad? So cost, those are the cons, negatives, disadvantages of trading on the Silk Roads. Uh, this is opposite. Oops. So you're going to just going to change this because I made a mistake. Okay. So you're gonna do the cost first of trading. So you can refer to questions number three and number six, right? So number six, two dangers of trading along the Silk Roads. And number three, three types of diseases, right? So those would be cost, right? Those would be negative things about trading along the Silk Roads. So, you know, go up, pick out, you know, which three you wanna take or kind of how you wanna describe that. You know, maybe this is all about diseases, you know, bandits, you know, that you could run out of food and water, you know, however you want to describe it. Okay, so pause to do your cost. And now you're going to do your benefits. So our pros, positives, advantages of trading on the Silk Roads. And numbers one, two, four, and five kind of all go to that. Right, so number five, that there were different goods exchanged. You know, that could be one thing that they traded all these goods. Number four, that ideas were exchanged, you know, to these areas, you know, number two, the different continents that it connected, right, Africa, Asia, and Europe together, that would be a positive. Um, number one, you know, if you have maybe about the social, religious, philosophical ideas, so it's up to you to pick kind of three positives that you want to describe in your chart, right, your benefits here. So pause, you know, to make sure you do that. Just gonna change this card. Okay, so our last one here, part four. Answer the final question below based off of the readings and questions, readings, questions, and charts above. And really this chart right here should kind of help you to make your decision. So do the benefits of trade outweigh the cost? Why or why not? If you say the benefits do outweigh the cost, you are saying there are more positives than negatives to trading. So it is worth it to trade. They should be trading. You know, that's what they should be doing. If you say the benefits do not outweigh the cost, you are saying there are more negatives than positives to trading. So it is not worth it to trade. You know, it's not worth it. There's too much bad stuff that could happen. The good doesn't kind of overtake that, right? The bad is worse. So you're going to answer with a claim and one piece of direct and cited text evidence to support it. Sentence starters have been provided for you. Fill in the blanks of the one you are choosing. So again, if you want to do option one, the benefits of trade do outweigh the cost because you would need to have your answer here. And then this is shown in the text, the Silk Roads, when it states. And again, you would need a direct piece of evidence. Um, if you're going to do option two, down here, the benefits of trade do not outweigh the cost because, and again, you need an answer there. This is shown in the text of Silk Roads when it states, and again, a direct piece of text evidence. Now, direct text evidence has to be from the reading. It cannot be from your chart. That's not the same as the reading. It can't be one of your answers. That's not a direct quote. So you need to actually go back you know, to that part of the reading. You know, so if you're going to talk about diseases, then above number three, right? You know, you need a sentence from here. If you're going to say it's negative. If you're going to talk about it interconnected the continents, you know, maybe you're going to talk about from here, but you need a direct piece of evidence. Okay, so why don't you pause to do that, part four. Okay, and again, you should have only done one of the options. You can delete the other one, you know, so if you're doing option one, you know, you can delete option two. If you're doing option two, you can delete option one, you know, whatever you wanna do. You could leave it blank, one of them, and just fill in the other. So again, this document counts as Wednesday's and Thursday's classwork. So whenever you're done, which should be now because you're finishing the video, just make sure you press that turn in, which is not online, but should be up here on yours, okay? And then you are done with the Silk Roads.